Hello, this is Mrs. Arnold, and in this video, we will talk about wind erosion and deposition. The main idea of the video is wind modifies landscapes in all areas of the world by transporting sediment. Questions you should be able to answer at the end are what are the conditions that contribute to the likelihood that an area will experience wind erosion? What features are characteristic of wind erosion and deposition, and how do dunes form and migrate? Now, recall from our last session that erosion is the removal of weathered rock in soil from its original location. A lot of times, students like to think that erosion is the breaking down of rock, but it's the movement of things that have already been broken down. Deposition is the um, when the eroded materials have been dropped in another location. Wind is going to be a powerful agent of erosion, and we're going to explain why. So we know that wind is an agent of erosion, which means that it moves particles. But how does it move particles? There are three different ways. The first way we're going to discuss is creep. In creep, this is, it's moves particles. along the ground in a rolling motion. Saltation is this next one we're going to talk about. Saltation is the bouncing motion of larger particles. Most sand is going to be transported this way because sand is a large particle. When we're thinking about soil particles, sand is the largest. So with saltation, it is going to bounce along the ground. And then our smaller soil particles like silt and clay, they can be suspended in the air and because of that, they can travel for longer distances. So suspension is the third way that wind moves particles. So in suspension, small particles stay airborne for long distances. Factors that contribute to wind erosion are the following. Limited precipitation. This is crucial because um, it can lead to an increase in wind erosion because precipitation holds down sediments. and allow plants to grow. The second factor is going to be um, if it is an area with little vegetative cover. That means it doesn't have a lot of plants to hold the soil in plants. So examples of those areas would be deserts, semi-arid areas, seashores, and some lake shores. As we can tell from this picture, 
of the United States in the areas where wind erosion occurs in the U.S., the um, coral colored area, wind erosion does not affect all areas equally. Deflation is the lowering of the land surface that results from winds removal Oops, of surface particles. This is a erosion, erosional landform seen from wind erosion. During the 1930s, portions of the Great Plains region experienced severe drought. Today, because of that, the Great Plains are characterized by thousands of shallow depressions known as deflation blowouts. Many of these deflation blowouts are the result of the removal of surface set sediment in the 1930s from the Dust Bowl. So this removal of, um, of surface sediment came because of removal of vegetation by far, poor farming practices that contributed and led to the Dust Bowl happening. Okay, so poor farming practices left the soil exposed and the soil particles went away. And then we were left with these deflation blowouts as a result in um, the Great Plains region of the U.S. So this picture is showing how through deflation, wind can create a bowl shape blowout. So if you are, if you see something that looks like this, you will know that that is deflation and is caused by wind erosion. Desert pavement is pretty cool, I think. So desert pavement is the coarse gravel in pebbles left behind as the finer surface materials are moved by wind. So anything that was fine in light for the wind to carry was picked up and then all the heavier stuff like the gravel and pebbles is left behind and it creates this form, landform that we call um, desert pavement. This is another erosional feature of wind. Abrasion is going to occur when particles such as sand rub against the surface of rocks in, or other materials. Abrasion can occur as part of erosional activities of not only wind, but also water. So streams and glaciers. In wind abrasion, specifically since we're focused on wind in this video, um, the wind is going to pick up the sand sized particles and blow them against anything in their path. The wind blown sand will cause the rocks to become pitted and grooved. 
but the windward side is going to become smooth and polished with continued abrasion. This is going to create Vintifax. And Vintifax are rocks that have been shaped by wind blown sediment. In this picture, we have arches and pillars in cap rocks from, um, they are going to form in different types of environments, but they are most commonly found in arid climates where the wind is the dominant erosional force. Wind, of course, can also lead to deposition because the wind is going to be picking up stuff through erosion. It picks it up and carries it someplace else, which is erosion happening, but eventually it's going to fall out. So wind deposition is going to occur in areas where wind velocity decreases. So just like with water, when the wind the vo velocity slows down, some particles cannot remain airborne and they drop out of the air and form a deposit on the ground. So we saw with water um, deposition that we got things like deltas when the velocity of the water slowed down to, to too slow and the sediment couldn't stay in it. Same thing happens with the wind. A dune is an example of wind deposition. So a dune is a pile of windblown sand that develops over time. Its shape is going to depend on sand availability, wind velocity and direction, and the amount of vegetation present. The windward side of the dune, you can always tell which side is the windward side because it's going to have a gentle slope. And the leeward side of the dune is going to have a steeper slope. Um, and this is the side that's protected from the wind. Okay, so there are different types of dunes and as mentioned in the last slide, they are going to form due to different conditions. So the conditions under which a dune forms determines its shape. So these conditions are the availability of sand, the wind velocity, wind direction, and the amount of vegetation that's present. Obviously, we have um, roots and plant roots that are holding the soil in, plant, in place, we're going to see less wind erosion. Okay, so different types of dunes. This first dune is a bar pan dune. Okay, so that's B-A-R-C-H-A-N, so the bar can dune. Um, this dune is going to form from a small amount of sand, forms from small amount of sand. Now they can reach pretty big, like 30 meters, okay? And in this case, the crests that we see point downwind. The next dune we have are the transverse dune. So 
So the transverse dune is going to form from a large amount of sand. And also it is going to lie perpendicular to the wind. Our next type of dune is um, parabolic. These dunes also form from a large amount of sand. And they have crests that point of wind. Our last dune is the longitudinal, wow, I knew I was gonna mess up, longitudinal. And And this one is going to form either from a large or a small amount of sand. Whoops. And it is going to lie parallel to the wind direction. So those are the different types of dunes. Dunes can move. Dunes can migrate, okay? And that is going to happen as winds continue to blow, the dunes are going to migrate. And how they happen is the following. So migration happens when prevailing winds continue to move sand from the windward side of the dune to the leeward side. And I will actually say to its leadward side. Okay, so in this case, once again, we um, talked about how the windward side is going to have the gentle slope. That's the side where the wind is blowing. And then the leeward side is going to have a steeper slope, okay? So what is happening to help this migrate is that the wind is just going to keep blowing in this direction. And so these particles are going to keep moving further and further over. And so that's how the um, dune is going to migrate. Okay, so Lois or Los or Lawson has a many different ways of pronouncing this. This is thick wind-blown silt deposits, okay? So wind remember, can carry fine, lightweight particles such as silt and clay in great quantities and for long distances. So this is how we get um, low or lowest deposits. So wind can carry fine, lightweight Nope, I did not mean to say sand. Sand is not a lightweight particle when we're talking about compared to silt and clay. Silt and clay in great quantities. So it can carry a lot of it, which might what we mean when we say great quantities in for long 
distances. And they can carry them far because they're lightweight. So wind can carry silt and clay far. Sand, not so much because it's a large particle. That is why sand is going to um, undergo saltation and not be suspended. And these soils, these um, lowest soils, are going to be some of the most fertile because they contain a lot of minerals. If you look at the picture here, we have a picture of the United States. The purple are going to be sandy areas where you can find dunes. And then the coral color is um, where you can see low deposits. And you can see here in Illinois, we actually have a lot of low deposits. So our soil is transported soil. It came from elsewhere, but um, that's also why it is so fertile because it was blown in from elsewhere and low soils are some of the most fertile. Okay, so in review, we learned about wind and how it can create erosional and depositional landforms. I hope you have a wonderful day and be kind to everyone you meet.